Dear Prime Minister, dear Deputy Prime Minister, Minister, ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome on behalf of the World Economic Forum. My name is Philipp Rösler. I am here Managing Director and responsible for the regions. I am very happy to welcome you all here today because we have the most interesting topic for today. It's about ASEAN. And as you can see, I look not really European. I was born in Vietnam, but I grew up in Germany, so in Europe. That means I know, I understand both ASEAN as well as the European Union. And that's the reason why I'm so happy to have such a distinguished panel today. Because if we are talking about ASEAN, we will talk about a single market, starting with December 2015. We are talking about 600 million people, 600 million customers. We are talking about jobs, inclusive growth. But much more important, and that is what I learned from Europe and its challenges. You need more than numbers and figures if you talk about such a beautiful project like ASEAN. ASEAN is not only bringing countries together. It's much more than having only a single market. It's a vision. It's not only a project. And for this kind of vision, to motivate people to work together on this vision, you need passion. Passion in the business community, as well as passion on a political level. So I'm very happy to have such a podium, because then we can now discuss ASEAN, ASEAN's future, what will happen 2015 and 2016 and in the follow-up, and what about passion of the politicians to motivate 600 million people to make ASEAN reality, to put the vision the fathers and grandfathers have had into reality. So that's the reason why we are here and why we as World Economic Forum are so happy to have you are here, and again, welcome on behalf of the forum. And it's now my pleasure to hand over to the, today's moderator. Philip, thank you very much indeed. Philip Rossler, ladies and gentlemen, Managing Director of the World Economic Forum. Thank you for making this possible. Ladies and gentlemen, ASEAN for us in Asia is a reality, is a, an important and defining element uh, of what happens in our daily lives and our daily activities. 2015 is going to be a pivotal year for ASEAN. The chairmanship of Malaysia is expected to be a dynamic and uh, fruitful one, taking us to December where the ASEAN economic community will finally be established. We have with us a distinguished panel of political leaders and we will begin our panel today by talking about the policy aspects and the national considerations of some of the major ASEAN countries here today and we'll get a five minute conversation and speech from each of our leaders here today to outline what their priorities are and what their thoughts are about what ASEAN is doing, where ASEAN is going and what 2015 will deliver for the nations and the people within. Um, with us we have today the Prime Minister of Cambodia, Hun Sen. The Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of Vietnam, Pan Binh Minh. We also have from Thailand, the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, Pridyaton Devakula. And uh, for a Malaysian perspective here, unfortunately, the Prime Minister of Malaysia, who was uh, to represent the country and uh, present his vision for Malaysia's chairmanship, uh, had to leave us today at the last minute because of the unfortunate demise of the King of Saudi Arabia. Uh, so we have a very able replacement uh, for the Prime Minister. Uh, it's his Minister in Charge of Economic Priorities has joined us today. Abdul Wahid Omar will outline the thoughts of the Malaysian chair. We'll begin, though, with the Prime Minister of Cambodia. Please, sir, your thoughts on ASEAN in 2015. In, and I would ask if you could keep to five minutes. I'll try and keep, keep you to time. Thank you. Thank you, Excellencies Chairman. Moderator, I'm uh, very uh, privileged and pleasures to be invited to deliver remarks on the benefits of uh, ASEAN integration in a new global economic context. At this World Economic Forum, which, which has become a very influential platform for the discussion of regional and global issues aimed at ensuring 
sustainable and inclusive development. Excellencies, Madam, ladies and gentlemen, in the midst of deep-reaching political, social, economic change in Asia, ASEAN has uh, it's a very big economy. ASEAN has experienced rapid progress, achieving a robust economic growth over the past decades. This in itself is a significant contribution to the improvement of living standard of the more than 600 million people living in 10 ASEAN member countries. The planned establishment of the ASEAN Economic Community, AEC, by the end of 2015, with a view to realizing the potential of the free flows of goods, capital, and skilled labor, will provide great opportunities for ASEAN to transform itself into the factories of the world, as well as a large, competitive regional market. Given its uh, centralities, ASEAN will reap many benefits from the steady rise of the Chinese economy, the recoveries and gradual opening of the Indian economy, and the new growth momentum of the Japanese and Korean economies. All of these will offer numerous business and investment opportunities on top of ASEAN existing traditional markets such as the US and EU. In this context, we expect that the promotion of cooperation with external partners through free trade agreements such as ASEAN Plus One, ASEAN Plus Three, the Regional Economic Comprehensive Partnership, and the Trans-Pacific Partnership will enable ASEAN to reap the benefit from newly emerging opportunities. Notwithstanding the aforementioned opportunities, ASEAN must continue to strive to address its challenges. These include maintaining macroeconomic stabilities, managing difficulties resulting from social economic structural changes, domestic inequalities and development gaps between member states, strengthening competitiveness and improving productivities in order to avoid the middle income trap and maintaining peace, stability, and security in the region. All these are prerequisites if ASEAN is to reap the full benefit of wider regional integration. Thus, ASEAN needs to continue its effort to facilitate integration in all sectors, especially by enhancing physical and institutional infrastructures, connectivities, promoting the elimination of the trade barriers, both tariff and non-tariff, defining and implementing policies to improve productivities and competitiveness of the economies, focusing on the agriculture industry sectors to support ASEAN growth. It must also strive to reduce domestic inequalities and to narrow development gap in the region while promoting human resource and skill development. For Cambodia, regional integration is a historic opportunity for the development of a modern and prosperous nation. Cambodia is an open country with a dynamic economy and a demographic dividend. Cambodia has achieved sustained economic growth over the last two decades with rapid poverty reduction and has the strong potential to become a robust middle-income economy. In 2015, Cambodia will implement its industrial development policies with the objectives of transforming its industrial base from labor-intensive industry to skill-intensive industry by 2025 through attracting investment to higher value added and more competitive industry. To this end, the Royal Government of Cambodia will continue promoting investment in infrastructures, strengthening connectivities of the transportation and logistics system, 
and improving regulatory framework and trade facilitation. It will also amend the law on investment in incentive scheme, provide skill training, and develop the necessary social protection service. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Prime Minister, thank you so much. Let's move directly on to the view from Thailand. Deputy Prime Minister. Oh, yes. Well, Excellency Hun Sen has talked about the ASEAN in general and the benefit of ASEAN to all members in general. I can be, now be more specific, and that is the, the AEC, the Asian Economic Community, by the end of this year. I would say that by the end of the year, a single market of over 600 million pe people will be realized. Some of, the, uh, some of the audience may not believe it, but uh, believe me, we will have a, a single market by the end of this year, simply because we have gradually integrated uh, the ASEAN on the trade and investment side for the past two decades. Uh, the tariff, tariff reduction has been gradually implemented you know, for more than 20 years, and by the year 2010, you know, we have reduced by our tariff by 99%. What is remain to be done is the harmonization of, of rules, harmonization of uh, non-tariff bearer things. We have to get rid of non-tariff bearer things. But this doesn't prevent us to stop. We will keep on doing it, and by the end of this year, we have a full-fledged AEC. More important thing is on the cross-border investment. Uh, you may not realize that the cross-border investment between industrialized countries in ASEAN and the, and the newly emerging economies in ASEAN has, has been for more than 10 years. And this is very important because uh, in ASEAN, in the industrialized uh, countries, we have a lot of, ent uh, of entrepreneur, private entrepreneur, and they do have private capital, while our friends in the emerging economies are in shortage of private capital. And private capital is a key to any industrialization. So by having the investors from industrialized countries in ASEAN invest in the crossbow in, in the newly emerging economies, we are helping our friends in the newly emerging economies to industrialize, uh, industrialize their country faster. And this is very important, and this thing is going on, especially after the AEC uh, at the end of, uh, the, after the full integration of AEC by the end of this year, there'll be more cross-border movement between countries in Asia. Now, the next step is, where do we go from now? The cross-border investment will create production basis of products in Asia, a product in ASEAN. And product in ASEAN will be, will be traded not only in the, in, between intra-regional trade, it will be traded, will be exported to the world too. So the next step, what we should do, is that ASEAN should get, should get together and sign the FTA with major partners of the world. It should, be, it should be FTA between ASEAN as a group and each major par uh, trading partner. It shouldn't be a bilateral FTA between single member country and major country. That would really uh, defeat the purpose of ASEAN. By having uh, FTA in the name of ASEAN with, uh, with a major partner, we have bargaining power. We, we, we will have a more, more equitable uh, FTA. I will leave it to you at that, yes. Deputy Prime Minister, thank you so much. Um, on to Vietnam, the view from there, Deputy Prime Minister. Yes, uh, since its foundation in 1967, with the establishment of the APTA and also now the ASEAN community by the end of this year, ASEAN has been trying to extend the relations of ASEAN with its external uh, countries. And now with the greater uh, integration, I think there are many benefits for the ASEAN community. But to uh, reap the benefits of the ASEAN community, we believe that we must focus on several issues. 
First, ASEAN must ensure the integration within ASEAN effective. And that is the ASEAN community by itself. Number two, each country must find the integrations as a driving force for the domestic reform. Because each country has different level of development, different economic policy, so there is a need to have the uh, to have the accelerations of the economic reform in each country. Th number three, because members of ASEAN countries have a different level of development, level of integration. So that we must need to help assist the countries, the members of lower development and, and lower of integration to catch up with the integrations of the whole ASEAN community. Number four, we must enhance mutual trust in ASEAN to solve the common problems, many common problems in ASEAN, pollution, environment, degradation, such as, uh, as such. F number five, we must make full use of the existing mechanism, ASEAN mechanism, and other mechanisms in sub-region, for example, the Greater Mekong region, ASEAN APEC. Finally, we must ensure the centrality of ASEAN in any mechanism. So those are the issues I, I think are very important. Could Thank I just you. ask you one question? The centrality of ASEAN in those mechanisms, could you expand on what that means? Centrality of ASEAN meaning that ASEAN can play a central role in all mechanisms. In ASEAN now, there is a mechanism of ASEAN itself mechanism between ASEAN and with its dialogue partners, for example, EAS, East Asia Summit, with the participations of uh, China, United States, Russia, and others. But ASEAN must play a central role in this mechanism. That is the centrality. Deputy Prime Minister, thank you. Finally, to Malaysia, Chair of ASEAN for 2015, with a, an ambitious and determined program um, for that chairmanship. Um, if you would not only explain what Malaysia's priorities are, but perhaps address some of the issues brought up by our other panelists and, and talk about the challenges posed by trying to unite the priorities um, of all the member nations. Thank you, Timo. Uh, first of all, uh, allow me to convey the apology of our Prime Minister for not being able to be here. Uh, this afternoon. Uh, he's certainly been looking forward to this, but unfortunately had to uh, fly to Riyadh uh, to attend the funeral of um, King Abdullah. Um, now, uh, allow me perhaps to uh, cover uh, my uh, remarks in, in three parts. I think firstly, uh, in terms of uh, the two main priorities for ASEAN, um, I think firstly is to look at the formal establishment of the ASEAN community. Uh, here our efforts will include um, to complete as much as possible uh, the remaining action lines of the three ASEAN community blueprints. As you know, ASEAN is not just about the economic community, but also about the uh, political security uh, economic community, uh, as well as the social cultural uh, community. And um, the other uh, priority would be to uh, look at the um, post um, the division uh, post-2015 uh, ASEAN. Um, second is on the issue of the ASEAN Economic Community. Um, I guess um, there are a lot of um, uh, efforts uh, to move um, towards a coherent uh, community here. And um, in respect of Malaysia, perhaps um, th there are three in particular that I would like to uh, accelerate. Uh, one would be in terms of uh, promoting uh, further uh, the concept of uh, the ASEAN banking and integration framework. Now, this has been put in place uh, by the uh, central banks in ASEAN, uh, but um, 
it has yet to be formalized. Um, uh, we're happy that uh, in the last few days of 2014, uh, Malaysia and Indonesia managed to sign the heads of agreement uh, that will facilitate the, um, the uh, greater presence of uh, banks from Malaysia into uh, Indonesia and likewise uh, from Indonesia into Malaysia. And it is our hope that um, the rest of the countries in ASEAN uh, can start uh, to sign uh, this agreement. Um, to me, this is very important uh, to facilitate greater trade and investment um, between, within ASEAN countries, uh, the presence of uh, banks uh, across these ASEAN cities uh, will certainly um, elevate the level of economic uh, activities uh, within ASEAN. Uh, secondly, is to uh, expand the concept of mutual recognition uh, across the various aspects, uh, not just confined to uh, trade um, uh, of goods and services, but also uh, in respect of uh, skilled labor, uh, in respect of uh, recognizing the various professions that we have, whether it's actually legal or accountancy uh, profession, um, and uh, even to the extent of uh, recognizing uh, the visa issued by one country to be recognized by another. So I think this is something uh, that can be uh, embraced further. Uh, we take the point uh, raised by the Deputy Prime Minister of Thailand uh, that uh, we need to uh, do a lot more in terms of harmonization of the various uh, rules, uh, including the non-trade uh, barriers. Um, but in some cases where we can't uh, come up with um, complete harmonization, uh, certainly the concept of mutual recognition uh, can be expanded further. Um, a third aspect of the uh, economic community is perhaps something that can be uh, thrown out uh, in the open, uh, and this is uh, to, actually, to explore uh, the possibility of coming up with a common ASEAN time zone. Now, the 10 countries in ASEAN has got uh, three different uh, time zones. Uh, Myanmar is actually GMT plus six uh, and a half hours. Uh, then we have uh, the um, Indochina um, uh, countries um, that will have uh, GMT plus seven. Uh, Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei, and Philippines are at um, GMT plus eight. Uh, and then the, we have Indonesia, uh, which has got the three time zones, uh, GMT plus seven, eight, uh, and nine. Um, I think it would be great the, if uh, somehow we can explore uh, the possibility of having one common time zone and, if possible, align it to a China time zone. So China is a huge country uh, cutting across uh, many time zones, um, but they do have one um, time. Uh, so I think, um, I think it would be a, a great possibility uh, to be explored. Um, the third part um, I would like to cover, uh, Timor, would be um, to look at beyond economic uh, prosperity. Now, this is uh, something which is very important and which we in Malaysia have learned. Um, but the agenda must certainly go uh, beyond uh, economic prosperity. Uh, whatever growth in the economy that we are achieving, it must translate into uh, the well-being of the people. Uh, the prosperity of the people. And this is where um, the Prime Minister has clearly mentioned that uh, when it comes to pursuing uh, the ASEAN Agenda uh, 2015 and beyond, uh, would be to look at a more people-centered ASEAN, um, to make sure that uh, whatever economic prosperity that we achieve will be translated into uh, higher household income uh, for the people of ASEAN, uh, greater access to financing, greater access to um, health care, and um, a more sustainable uh, environment and more inclusive society. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. We have a few minutes left, so what I'd like to do, propose uh, at this point, is if each of you would maybe comment on, on what you've heard uh, and whether the development here and the process uh, that um, Malaysia has outlined for, for 2015 is, is viable. Please. Well, a lot of things uh, can be done and should be done to move ASEAN forward. But the weak point of ASEAN is the implementation. Uh, we have the ASEAN Secretariat Office is a bit weak, I would say that, you know, with limited uh, budget and limited staff. Also, uh, if, if you're going to move forward uh, ASEAN, not only for economic benefit, but also for show, social benefit, the very key thing is that we have to beef up our secret office and we have to select a more forceful, uh, uh, you know, more efficient, what do we say, you know, with more, the, the one who have clout to run the ASEAN Structured Office. So you share, you are sharing, the, uh, Malaysia is sharing ASEAN this year. Think about it before you move, otherwise it won't be successful. Prime yes. Minister, would you like to make a final comment? 
Bucks of Germany. I would like uh, to add a little bit that uh, it, uh, the late uh, 2015, we, uh, the end of one stage, and stepped to another stage. That does not mean ASEAN uh, one ASEAN has been completed. But it's uh, to end one stage and step to another, why many works has to be continued to be done. And I'm optimistic that uh, we can do it with the effort uh, internally and uh, within ASEAN as a whole. This is what uh, I see. Uh, is uh, difficult, but can be avoided, and we have to do it. And it is necessary that we have to do that. Thank you, Deputy Prime Minister. Yes, sir. One of the issues people are talking about is about the uh, ASEAN identity. What we have the common ASEAN identity. Many uh, uh, many issues can be phrased here. Peoples to people exchange quality, the same quality of education, for example. And the proposal from Malaysia about the time on one common time zone could be also the identity of ASEAN. So there are many other things. When we reach to the ASEAN community, but this, at the same time, we have to find the common ASEAN identity. Thank you. Well, I would like to echo uh, the viewpoint of uh, Deputy Prime Minister from Thailand uh, in terms of the need to strengthen the ASEAN Secretariat. Um, I think there's a lot more things that we could do if uh, the Secretariat can be uh, enhanced further uh, to enhance its effectiveness, if you like. Now, uh, if you were to look at the various initiatives that we have outlined um, uh, three months ago uh, in Nepido, the trade ministers have uh, reinforced the commitment uh, to fulfill as much as possible those initiatives. Uh, now, I know that uh, in this room uh, today, there are many skeptics uh, to say that um, we'll never get there. Uh, but my view is that, look, we are not likely to get 100% compliance with all these, these initiatives. But if we can get to even 90% as a start by December, we would have come a long way. So I think let's uh, move forward uh, with a lot of confidence. Uh, and coming from the private sector before, uh, if we were to take the pragmatic approach, Timo, uh, I think um, ASEAN will go a long way. Can Thank I just you. ask you one question? On, uh, please, Prime Minister. Uh, I would like to add a little bit more in relation to the time zone. This uh, idea uh, is not new, but uh, leaders of ASEAN uh, my uh, generation is Leon Minmi with uh, Sultan of Brunei. At, uh, at the time, Cambodia uh, was chairman of ASEAN by the year 2012. I still remember that there was also discussion about the common time zone in order to guarantee that once uh, the stock uh, exchange closed in Hong Kong, in Singapore, but uh, the ex uh, stock exchange in Singapore, in Vietnam, in Laos, and in Thailand will uh, uh, will not be lost because of the difference of the time zone. That's one of the issues we have been thinking. And I think Zin can find the common identities in relation to the time zone. But what I would like to, to say, uh, it cannot become the common uh, identity is on the point that ASEAN have uh, uh, been a right hand wheel, left hand, -hand wheel. That's the point that we cannot find a common point. Uh, this uh, law, because uh, in uh, some countries, uh, like the farmers of the French colonialism choose uh, the left-hand dry wheel, and the farmers colonial of Egypt choose a uh, right-hand dry wheel. So it's very uh, fine to find the common identities on the traffic. Uh, the traffic. So, thank you. Thank you. We have run out of time now, but what we've done here today with this panel, ladies and gentlemen, is just provide a platform for some policy thoughts and some interesting policy thoughts. There's not been much debate here because I wanted to get a sense of how the land lies as we go in to the Malaysian year. The next part of our conversation will take on a little bit, a number of those issues and, and examine them much more closely in a debate format. But for the moment, I'd like you to join me in thanking uh, our politicians here on the panel today. Um, Hun Sen, Prime Minister of Cambodia. Uh, Deputy Prime Minister of Thailand at the far end, Pham Ban Binh Minh of uh, Vietnam, and of course, uh, Abdul Wahid Omar of Malaysia, who will stay with us for part two of, of our conversation, ladies and gentlemen. But thank you for the moment.
I would ask you, please, to remain because the